Okay, are you ready for the very, very last intro? Oh my gosh, Lisa. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. <gasps> Welcome everyone to our final episode. The final episode of Caitlin, no, of Lisa and Caitlin's. <laughs> It doesn't really matter which name comes first. Okay, Your name welcome comes to the first. finale. It's the finale of Lisa and Caitlin's Holiday Movie Club. It's the last gathering of the club members. Caitlin, this is a big deal. Oh I mean, it's, it's the last gathering of this holiday season, if you will. I'm hopeful yes. we will be back for another seasonal podcast. Absolutely. We've been talking about doing this podcast for years, and we finally did it. Caitlin and I have been friends for 8 billion years, and and every season we watch these good, bad holiday movies on all the streaming services, and we text furiously back and forth about our thoughts, feelings, and emotions on each one. And we said, hey, you know what? We should just do a podcast and talk about it, you know, face-to-face, voice-to-voice, puns to Kevin. Wine to wine. Wine to wine. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, we finally did it. So we are so happy that you guys have joined our holiday club to discuss these uh, these beloved Christmas films. I can't really call them films. Um, but uh, with me... Yes, made for I'm, TV movies? Yeah, made for TV movies for sure. Um, I'm Lisa Foyles and with me as always is my beautiful, wonderful, amazing, talented co-host, it's Kayla! Hi everyone! Happy holidays, and here with me, as always, is Puns. He tried to be like, I'm independent, I won't be here and snore in the background, and then immediately, as soon as Lisa started the intro, he's, like, begging to come up. <laughs> uh, puns has been the highlight of this entire podcast. I mean, me. he's he's wearing his seasonal harness right now, he's being nice and festive. Dude, he's so festive. He's so stylish. Puns is more stylish than I am, straight up. He Yeah, he's got sharks. He's got dinosaurs. He's got uh, holiday gear. You know. Where do you get Where do you get his uh, his dog gear? So I get it from a company called Frenchie Bulldog Co. Because Puns has a big head and very uh, wide shoulders, but a tiny waist because that's how French bulldogs are built. So right. harnesses are hard to fit him. And so someone started making harnesses for mainly like French bulldogs, pugs, um, English bulldogs, so that have similar body shapes like him. And yeah, he's kind of like a reverse. From. He's kind of like a reverse avocado with legs, <laughs> and then like an and then like a an, an orange to, uh, attached to the top of it. Yes, he's, de- <laughs> he's definitely a tank. Like people always underestimate how much muscle he has. He has oh, knocked yeah. over a many person at the dog park because they're just like, "Oh, what a cute little dog!" And they think he's he like, is like slam. twenty pounds, oh, and he just puts his paws on their shoulders, and he's knocked people over before. Puns is the best dog. And I even have my own dog and I say that. But uh, Riley's pretty good too. Anyway. I mean, I mean besides um, Riley, Riley's number one in your heart. Puns is number two. In my heart. Yes. It's, it's a tie. So we have done eight episodes. This is our eight I can't believe it's the seven finale. solid episodes talking about the various movies, uh, Christmas holiday related films that are on Netflix and Lifetime and Allmark. <laughs> we finding some on YouTube, actually. And, uh, I, I did this think this week... was a really great find on how many of these movies are uploaded on YouTube and not enforced. Like, yes, Lifetime just does not care. <laughs> Wait, oh, or I Hallmark. thought it was Lifetime putting them on there. It's so, not? so some of them are. Other ones that we've watched, such as um, I don't know about you, but Christmas at the Plaza, I definitely watched on not on the Hallmark Channel. Oh, I just searched for it and then click play. I didn't even see what channel. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so okay, so that's a little pro tip from our podcast. Uh, a lot of these movies, Lifetime and Hallmark, are on YouTube, so yeah. you can go check them out. I'll take but, it. But uh, yeah, so this week, we are talking about three movies. We're talking about Christmas at the Plaza, which mm-hmm. is by Hallmark. We're talking about Feliz Navidad with Mario Lopez. <laughs> How many times Lifetime. are you going to sing that song when Feliz we review it? Feliz Navidad. <laughs> It's funny because it was hard to search for Feliz Navidad because it's spelled just like Feliz Navidad. Stop, Stop. I know. Same. So I had like to add "dad" in all caps and then full movie and then lifetime. To get the I just right put one. Mario. I put Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez was the other one. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna talk about Last Christmas, which is a movie on HBO Max. Now it came out last year in theaters, but we are just watching it right now for the first time because Caitlin and I just signed up for HBO Max. Uh, oh my great. gosh, Lisa! Ah, yay! 
as we recorded this, I realized I did not watch Last Christmas. So you are you serious? About Last Christmas. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm a I horrible can't podcast you host. What? I know. Well, I'm I'm upset about this. I'm I really can't proud of myself. You... I was really proud of myself that I accomplished everything. I had my list. I wrote my sentences and statements, and uh, I failed. You know I'll, what? It's I'll actually be really okay. Excited when you give me Last Christmas and you're like, describe this movie, and I'd be like, well, Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know um, what? It's okay because it doesn't really fit our description okay. because it's a genuinely great movie. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to – I'm going to kick off the podcast by talking about this. So, Go for it. No spoilers. I was ready to talk about it, but I can't anymore because I, I really don't want to spoil – any of it because it's such a great movie i feel like it was kind of my reward for sitting through so many cringeworthy movies this season <laughs> yeah that i just found this movie on hbo i mean i kind of remember uh hearing about it last year it's with amelia clark and henry golding which is yes. uh you know her for turner cargarian and he Daenerys targaryen Cardarian. mother of dragons if you will yes and uh, he was the male lead in Crazy Rich Asians. And he's an amazing actor and very likable. They're both phenomenal in this movie. And uh, without giving anything away, it is the first movie that I have legit cried watching in years. I don't know. And I didn't expect it. Like, I was watching it, and it was really compelling and intriguing. And it's produced by, uh... oh, my gosh. God dang it. Like Emma Thompson, I believe. Okay. And um, she, every like all the acting performances are so good. The story is so good. And it's just like so fun and likable that when the twist hit, I just didn't expect it. And I just broke down. <laughs> I'm just like sitting in my living room by myself just crying. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. I'm glad nobody else is here. But it's it was in such a good way. So... Of all the movies you watch this season, I recommend that you curl up by the fire with some hot cocoa or some wine and uh, turn on Last Christmas on HBO Max and actually pay attention to it. This is not a laundry folding movie. This is not a put on in the background while you're baking. This is a legit, you know, on par with Love Actually and the holiday movie that you need to sit on oh, your couch and Lisa, watch. You're it is. On this that is that far. Oh. I'm, I'm excited gonna, for your a, ratings at the end of actual good Christmas movies. Yeah. I think I think you're showing your hand a little bit that this one might be in your top five. Mm, I think you're right, Caitlin. Uh, but no, like I said, I feel spoilers. like it was my reward. It was my reward that I finally got yes. like an amazing Christmas movie, and I'm going to be watching it every year. So well, that's and, uh, my I, biggest recommendation. I, I was almost watched this on a plane, and then I was like, for some reason, I think I, I ended up not watching it. And it made me happy because once you were like, I haven't cried like that in so long. I was like, oh, thank goodness, because nothing like bawling on a plane <laughs> to, to a right. airplane movie that you did not expect. So mine was, <laughs> I learned this le- lesson was Saving Mr. Banks, where <gasps> I watched that movie on an airplane. Oh. And I'm just bawling. And the poor guy next to me is like some businessman who travels <laughs> all the time, who is like a middle-aged businessman that's just like, do I say something? Do I not? I don't know. Oh how do God. I deal with this? Like, Full ball and crying. I love this story. This is one of my favorite Caitlin stories. I wish I was there for it. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you probably won't cry now knowing that, like, I cried and I don't know, I'm I might... kind of, like, preparing I'm you for it. I'm a when it comes in movies. Like, remember when we all saw Up thinking it was going to be a nice Pixar movie oh and we all gosh. saw it? <laughs> Ten minutes into the movie, we're ugly crying. <laughs> Oh, Which man, we that all movie did not me. expect. <laughs> Dude, we're not expecting. Oh, it's a movie about balloons and old people and a little Asian kid. It's going to be great. And we're all just bawling because it's an amazing, amazing yeah. film. I can call that one a film. All right, Caitlin. It's so moving on to our, you know, the two movies that fit the description of this podcast, the good, bad holiday movies, run of the mill. You know what's going to happen. Predictable. We love them. Our first one is... Christmas at the Plaza by Hallmark, which we both watched on YouTube. <laughs> what a yes, that we say? <laughs> Sorry, Hallmark. We... <laughs> did you just also have um, ads for Candace Cameron Burr? Just yes. like, <laughs> yep, oh, I, yep, we watched the yeah. same one. Mm-hmm. It was just yeah, like, we watched the, same one. the countdown to Christmas is here with Hallmark. <laughs> hey, it lured me in. I was like, hey, I want to watch that movie that they're talking yeah. about. <laughs> I know. All we right, really, Caitlin. really got to watch one of her movies. Okay. Yes. Give us a rundown of uh, what 
the basic plot of Christmas at the Plaza and go. While making an exhibit at the iconic Plaza Hotel in New York, Astorian finds true love. Are you, did you just make that up or did you prepare? Oh, I prepared, Lisa. It was the final okay. one. I've learned my lesson. We can because get you're getting so good at it. Because you're getting so good at it. Because you're getting so good at it. Because you're getting so, so good at the at the um, descriptions that. Oh, you know. thank you. No, I took yeah. the time to actually write it. Um, so for me, at least on this one, it starts a little slow. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the actress uh, because she is in Agents of Shield and she plays oh, Agent okay, Simmons. That's where that's where I know her from. Yeah, okay. and so I was. I have a couple questions, such as how much do you think the plaza? How much do you think the plaza paid for this movie? Okay, I mean, there I've was never a lot of been to the placement. plaza. So this is like this is a, a place in New York. Yes, is it like a really famous landmark? It, it's I'm like a famous and I don't hotel, know. and it's like it, it takes place. It's a famous hotel, and apparently it's a hotel and condominiums. I looked this up going to the Wikipedia page today, and so it's like the backdrop of a lot of like iconic movies. But I don't know if it's like a famous landmark like you always have to go to the plaza. Because I've been to New York many times. I have not been to the plaza. I've looked at it on mm. the exterior, but I never felt compelled to go inside. I'm not going in for high tea. Yeah. I didn't think it was quite so bad that it was like an advertisement for the plaza the whole time. But I do enjoy movies that kind of celebrate the location that they're in. Yeah. Where the the building or the, the city even that they're in is almost kind of like a character on its yeah. own. Yeah. So I really thought the plaza was like a beautiful backdrop for this movie. Um, they could have gone a lot of different ways with the plot of this movie. But they yep. chose... Um, Lots of files and paperwork. But yeah, anyway, I know. continue, Kaylee. Give, give me your I thoughts. Thought it, your the thoughts. movie was really hard to start with because she is a historian and she gets tasked to make like basically a historic exhibit about Christmas at the Plaza, and she's just like, I just don't know what to do with all these files. This would take you know, years to pull or a year to pull all these files. When they pull the files, it literally is a box that says December and then the year. And I'm like, okay, well. That kind of cuts down your options a little bit. <laughs> and then when she figures out that she's going to do the exhibit based on the different tree toppers. I can't say the word, Lisa, so. Uh, yeah, you should, I, I. You can try to say it. No. They, they call they keep, it a weird word. And yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, and it's something opera. I know it's a something yeah, opera. Know. Uh, like candelabra, but something else. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she's like, oh, I'm going to do it on these different tree toppers because there's one for every year. And then she's like, oh, and now I have the perfect title for it. And she goes to her computer and types out Christmas at the Plaza. And I was like, couldn't think of that. You couldn't <laughs> type that before. Really, the tree toppers had to inspire you to get there. So, and then she, in her time there, she encounters the holiday decorator who is named Nick. And she's in a relationship with a pseudo-intellectual um, who they all mock what she's doing at the Plaza when they go to a holiday party. And I was just like, ugh. At those people, just leave. Just leave. Anyone that's going to mock what you're working on when they're all in academia, just no. Yeah. No. the I mean, that's a, a sort of a big problem that I have with the formula of Christmas movies is that they never even give the ex-boyfriend a chance. You know, mm. from the very beginning, we know this guy's going to – he's not going to make it. Like, he's out. No, and especially of course when, uh, she's gonna was... fall in love with the hot guy. Oh, hundred percent. Especially when on top of it, like the first introduction we have to him is that he's late, and she just says the most sassy thing, which was like, "Oh, did you order a cider?" She's like, "Yeah, it was a hot cider twenty minutes ago." And I was like, <laughs> "Twenty well, minutes ago? Why yeah. did you drink it?" Yeah. So she was, you know, she she's kind of our typical. You know, we gave our top 10 must-haves in a holiday movie, and one is the, like, well, she's not tragically single, but she's, you know, snobby and all about the work, and her work is very important to her, and it comes first. Uh, she was pretty unlikable at the beginning of this yes. movie, I would oh. say. Like, I was not oh, really rooting for her. I thought Nick was super cool, and he was cute, and I was like, oh, he decorates for a living. That's kind of cool. Like, both occupations were very interesting, uh, unrelatable. Like, we, I could not relate to either of them. And is hers even not nice. a real Because it was something different. Because usually these movies are like, yeah. I'm, she's a baker, or she's the interior designer, or right. she's, you know, a small town business owner who owns an antique shop. Like, I thought it was kind of.
kind of refreshing that he was the Christmas decorator and that she was like a historian. Like it was just different mm-hmm. roles. And that's what I liked about um, Christmas Perfection when she is a greeting card illustrator and the guy was like a copywriter. Like mm-hmm. it's just nice when you get different occupations in the mix. Um, yeah, I agree with that. For me, I think the thing that like really made her unlikable at the start was just kind of this ho-hum, woe is me attitude she had a lot. And it, it she did warm up on, to you as the movie went on, but it was just really frustrating. We we're like, well, this is your passion and the thing you care about, but yet you're getting like so overwhelmed when it doesn't seem that bad. Right. It's yeah. just so defeatist no, that, that bugged me. Um, I liked the best friend. The best friend was great. The elf. Yeah. She's like, yes. I'm not really an elf. <laughs> you know that, right? Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes. Cute. I loved her. Um, I also enjoyed the um, head bellman. He's a bellman. Reginald Brookwater. What is it? Reginald what? Brookwater. Brookwater. Oh, the second he said, my name is Reginald Brookwater, I laughed out loud. <laughs> I wrote I that one down. I was party. like, ha! Yeah. I was like, Reginald that Brookwater. is one hell of a name. So we get to the, so the exhibit goes well. She's going to do and profile all the different treetoppers for every year. But then we come to 1969 that there's no treetopper for, and there's a mystery, a brewing of what happened to this treetopper. So Lisa, Mm -hmm. this is where we get the twist in the movie. And my twist was, did they send the treetopper to space because 1969 is when we went to the moon? (laughs) And it's like, if this oh. treetopper is like in the Smithsonian or something, that's what I thought the twist was going to be. Much better twist. See, we need to write holiday movies for sure. We'll incorporate something being sent to space in Puns' Christmas movie, Felice Navi Dog, which we are going to write <laughs> as soon as we wrap this final episode of the podcast and it I will debut wait. next Christmas. We guarantee it. Go get us that Netflix deal, Lisa. Mm-hmm. You got it. Also, can we get a major puns from a fictitious country that borderlines Panglia and Aldovia? Panglia? Yes, yeah, so we can be in the universe. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's like a fiddleabra? Fiddle, fiddle, I don't know. It's, yeah, they kept uh, saying it. And I'm like, no one knows what that means. Be- no, <laughs> because no as does. soon as they said it, they then had to be like, oh, the tree topper. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we know. You don't know. Um <laughs> No, I don't, you know what, I don't really have too many feelings about this movie because I thought it was fine for what it was. It's tragically unfunny, which makes me sad because I like comedy, even when movies are, okay, so take like Midnight at the Magnolia, for example. Like, that movie was pretty bad, but it was like trying to be funny and it cracked jokes left and right, and I appreciated that. This movie was more of a, a romantic drama not a lot of funny silly quirky happening going on uh so that just kind of made me sad but agree well what about the twist lisa what about the twist the twist is fine it's all fine i don't know the twist is reginald the head bellman um was originally a christmas decorator and commissioned to do the original tree topper as part of the family business and then he decided not to do it because he felt uninspired because he lost the love of his life. Wah, wah. Yeah, every yeah. tree chopper was, like, designed by an uh, an artist. And a different were, They artist, were all unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, I, overall, I, I just wish they would have given the ex-boyfriend a little more of a fighting chance. I wish they would have made him a more likable character because I think it would have given her more of a struggle, more of a decision. She's caught in the middle, you know? Mm-hmm. And then we would have... Um, you know, it would have been we would have been a little more in the mystery of what is she gonna do? Is she gonna stay with him? Is she gonna go with Nick? What's she gonna do? But instead, like from the very very beginning, we're like, oh yeah, she's gonna end up with that dude, and there was no there was, there no, was question. no question, and we knew that yeah. within the first like probably ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think the pretentiousness and like her pretentiousness, his pretentiousness, it was just a lot. But I wish they would have separated her and the boyfriend sooner so we could have gotten a little bit more time between her and Nick and them warming up to each other. I also would have enjoyed more time with um, the best friend Elf because I did enjoy her and I think that was a good moment that we could have had more comedy like when she's like, I'm an elf so what? It's New York. Like, you would see that she was trying to make some of those jokes. Let's, let's get more of them. Give her Man, some more time. So, there's so many movies set in New York. Like so many Christmas movies set in New York. Um, 
I guess it's because it's just so beautiful and magical there at Christmas time. I wouldn't know. I've never been there at Christmas time, but I'm sure it, is. it looks like that in the movies. Um, Caitlin, did you ever see Center Stage? The yes. ballet movie. Oh yeah, I was I was obsessed with that movie when I was younger. I, I think we were all she... obsessed with that movie. Yeah, I kept thinking the girl from this movie was the anorexic chick from Center Stage. Like the whole time, I'm like, that's her. And then I looked it up. It's not her. No, but it's it not sure her. But it sure looked like her. It sure looked. Yeah, like her. I could get the vibe. I could get the vibe. Yeah, no, it's not. It's Simmons from The Shield. Uh, yeah, I think the Simmons from Simmons from uh agents of shield can act i just think she just did not get a lot to work with this in this movie yeah like i said it was it's okay it was fine it was it's not fine. at the top it's of the like, list you could watch but it's not at the bottom it's like it's not the bottom in the middle yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think we should move on to our All next right. mario lopez movie we have already <laughs> talked about recipe for seduction the kfc the oh lifetime my gosh mashup whatever that was on youtube and then we talked about a very merry toy store with him and melissa joan hart and his latest film movie made for tv movie which is we watched on youtube is feliz navidad and uh, it was directed by melissa joan hart and caitlin's gonna give us a little rundown of the plot okay go Mario Lopez is a dad and school principal who has a hard time around the holidays because of his wife who passed a Christmas a Christmas concert and an unlikely encounter while he's working at his holiday gig brings him back into the Christmas spirit and he rediscovers love. Man, there's so many dead people in Christmas movies. Oh, I know. I know. There's always someone dead. And then they're I, always like, man, I really miss mom. I really miss grandma. Man, my wife. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a lot it's of an easy works. way to get emotion in a in a yeah in a plot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not, not tons of divorces, but yes, a lot of widowers. Um, I did think it was interesting the pacing of this movie because I don't know if you've timed this. I did. They don't go on a date till thirty mi- thirty eight minutes in. Yeah, there's a lot it of like lead takes up. Takes a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wait, also thought. You, wait, were you just saying that his wife was? They were divorced. No, I said you don't get enough like divorce. In these oh, movies. It's okay. I'm like, cause did I get this wrong? With no, 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 no. She, she was, she had passed. <laughs> okay, she was no okay. longer with us. Ooh. Like, man, there's a couple of moments in this movie that I didn't pay attention, but I thought I was paying attention enough to know that. Um, also, and yeah. I thought the whole conflict of that the love interest, who's played by like Anna Lynn, because we're not going to use real names on this one, Anna Lynn from 90210. And, oh, that was her. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Mario Lopez is that she lives three hours away in Phoenix. And I'm just like, well, this doesn't seem like that crazy of a conflict. Like, you could do the long distance thing until, like, Noelle graduates if you want to make it work. Like, this is not that yeah. big a deal. I, I also feel... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I also feel this movie was 100% shot in Burbank. Yeah, it very well could have been. Um... Or a very so, hot Canadian summer. <laughs> so this was produced by uh, Heartbreak. Wasn't it, it was produced Heartbreak by Heartbreak, Heartbreak yes. Yeah, um, for a lifetime because Melissa Joan Hart has been directing a lot of these type of movies and she's been doing a great job. Yeah. And definitely my favorite part of this movie was her cameo. She was – so the daughter puts oh my God, Mario Lopez, a.k.a. AC Slater, on a dating app and he starts to go on dates with, like, ridiculous girls. And one of them – was the first one, maybe, is Melissa mm-hmm. Joan Hart. And she's really into, like, spiritual stuff and, like, crystals and, like, oh, you're a Libra and I'm a Cancer or whatever. I don't know. It was just really fun. I guess. Because we know that they're, yeah, we know they're friends. We know they've starred a million movies together, like Holiday in Handcuffs, which I love. And, uh, you know, she's directing this movie, so you can just imagine that was a really fun scene for them to do together. So I really enjoyed that. But yes, overall, I thought AC Slater was really likable and really yep. you know cracking his little jokes and you know showing off his little dimples and just being his mario lopez self and i liked him a lot and uh i thought it was fine i just didn't think there was enough plot i feel like it was no. just kind of like the same thing over and over like he's he clearly likes this girl and then they talk for a long time and then they do the music thing and then they talk more and then there's more music and then they talk more and then there's more music. <laughs> I'm just like, it's yeah. kind of just doing well, the same thing. Especially the whole like, well, we can't be serious because you're three hours away. And it's just like, eh, no, you could. You could flirt. Right. You could date. You know, this like non-date thing that they were going for. It was just kind of like, eh. It, it just was a lot. 
I had a lack of believability. I liked the the daughter, and I liked the sister who had mm-hmm. moved in yeah, once good. the mother had passed away. Because I also thought it was the movie set in Arizona was also an interesting dynamic. Funny enough, Noel also takes place in Arizona, but I do like you know that desert environment because you usually don't think of that when it comes to mm-hmm. like Christmas movies. However, right. I wish they would have leaned more into that then because while some of those exteriors were definitely from Arizona. Uh, a lot of this was definitely filmed in Burbank or in the summer in Canada. Like, there's no way that forest was Arizona. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I haven't been to Arizona. Are there forests there? Well, I mean, we some, have some forests here in Nevada. I think there might be in some parts of Arizona. I am not an Arizona expert. My sister lived in Arizona for many years, but she was always in the Phoenix area. Uh, uh. Tempe in particular. So I know that area. And mm-hmm. I wish they would have kind of leaned more into, like, what you would normally think of in like Arizona, like Deserts. I think they did a good job with Noel showing that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But maybe yeah. in northern Arizona, I, I I'm not an Arizona fan, so sorry, YouTubers uh, and people in the comments who are gonna be like, don't speak about Arizona. We have forests like that. We're from Arizona, born and raised in Arizona. We have trees. You girls are idiots. Unsubscribe. Yeah, we don't know what we're talking about, and we. Yeah. Whatever you say, we agree with you. Yeah, but I <laughs> whatever know, anyone but in the like, comments says, we agree with you. But like, show me it. Like, I think of like Spike, who lived in uh, from Snoopy, who was like, show me a cactus with like you know lights on it or something that's a little bit more yeah. like stereotypical oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. desert. You know, play up. To I that. see what you mean. Yeah, lean into. I get what you're saying. I yeah. get what you're saying. It's kind of like what we were saying about the California Christmas movie, where. You know, they didn't show any, like, you know, palm trees or beach. Or, like, yeah, if you call it California Christmas, we imagine surfboards and Beach Boys music and, you know, that type of stuff. And I didn't really do that. Yeah. Um, yeah it was no, fine. I, I just thought the fun. whole... It was fine. Uh, the wardrobe was pretty good. I think they also did a really good job with Noelle's outfit because all of her outfits look like something like a 16 or 15 year old would wear. Um, the final concert, the outfits were great. They all look like high schoolers. I do think the singing, though, and the routines of the acapella group, and maybe I'm spoiled from Pitch Perfect, but I'm just like, the Troublemakers would have slapped them. Like, they would have dominated this. Yeah. Well, um,. Why were there only, like, 12 people in the audience for the finale <laughs> song? Am I yeah. wrong? It looked like there was, like, no Oh, no, there, there were definitely, like, 20 people max. They spread them out to try to make it look like more. It was probably the mostly the crew. Yeah. <laughs> crew spreads. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, then, like, the whole, let's stand on stage to hold the hands. I'm just like, eh, it's a little bit much. And then just, like, how many times can we sing Feliz Navidad in a movie? Right. We knew that was coming. Um, yes. You know, I it want to awful. keep I want to keep seeing Mario Lopez in Christmas yeah. movies. I want Melissa Joan Hart to keep being in Christmas movies. I want her to keep directing and producing Christmas movies. So I'm 100%. gonna say it was fine, it was great, you should watch it, it's fine. I would recommend um, this over a Christmas at the Plaza. Like, because it was something yes. different. And everyone was all trying hard. You could tell everyone was acting. I, I think the pieces were there, it just wasn't assembled in the best way. Yeah, I th- yeah, it is what it is. And it's it's exactly what you expect from these uh, from these type of Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're not looking for freaking Citizen Kane here. I know. <laughs> we just want something that makes us feel good while we're wrapping gifts and baking sugar cookies, which, can I tell you a catastrophe horrible thing that happened to me? Uh, please do. So I don't bake very often because I don't have that much time anymore, but I decided... You know what? I'm gonna make Chris. I'm gonna make sugar cookies. So I went to the store looking for like one of them bags, bag sugar cookies where you just like add an egg and you mean like some the butter box? and yeah, like the yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. the little bags of them, a little box. Yeah, like a box yeah, of sugar cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're sold out, of course, because you know, 2020 and everyone's baking. Um, so I'm like, you know what? How hard can it be to make from scratch? So I looked up a little, I Googled it, and I'm like, okay, sugar cookie recipe. That looks really easy. So I made sugar cookies, and I cut them out into little shapes, and they looked beautiful. And I put them on my Instagram story, and you probably saw it because they looked, like, super professional, super amazing. Definitely would have got a Paul Hollywood handshake. Yeah, sure. girl. Get that Paul then, Hollywood handshake. Hell yeah. And I wake up the next morning, and my kitchen is infested with ants, and all <gasps> the ants got into the Tupperware where the sugar cookies are, and they're just like, How did they get I mean, they the enjoyed Tupperware? them. So uh, I kind of have this big, flat 
looking Tupperware thing that's actually used for crafts, like crafting. Oh. Uh, but it's really good for storing cookies that have frosting on the top because it doesn't smush. Oh, them. it doesn't it's, smush. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can so, fit a lot. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you can fit a lot, but it's not airtight. And the ants, they knew that. They were in their little ant home and they're like, yo, we can smell some cookies like a let's half go. mile away. Let's assemble. Let's go. And they got into my kitchen and they just went to town. So I'm happy that they had a nice little feast. But um, yeah, I, I saw your children were making friends with the ants. Yeah, Chloe decided um, I was not allowed to get rid of the ants because she had to show them all of her Christmas artwork and put on a little art museum for them to just walk around and admire, which they did. There was, there's two, we had two separate ant problems. We had red ants on the counter and then black ants on the floor. Oh, and no. the black ants on the floor were enjoying Chloe's art. And the red ants, the little brushers on the counter, were eating my sugar cookies. So it was really like an all sides attack, like an onslaught, I would yeah. say. Um, and it was gross and it was super, it was it's really smelly because we used the ant spray all over the kitchen and um, it just smells like death. So yeah, okay. that was fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, very pungent. But that's um that was my latest baking experience. So before, I'm sorry to hear about it and I'm sorry about the ants. We had an ant invasion in our kitchen about a month ago where it was coming through where what is it called? Where like the caulking had started to move like oh, come apart and they came yeah. straight through there. So I got like my little cock gun and resealed everything so those bastards can't get back in. Those little jerks, man. It's because it's getting cold out, and they're like, we're cold. We got to go inside to the heat. We got to get in there. And I so, hate them. And they I, just die. I agree. I do not like the ants. Before we move on to wrapping it up, I have two things I want to address in Police Not Be Dead. Yes, absolutely. One, Is it about the- her tripping on the stairs? Because that was my favorite scene. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, no, but that was a really great where she trips <laughs> when she's like, like, was like, it, oh, I Was fell. it Rudolph she trips on? <laughs> yeah, it was like one of the worst stage falls I've ever seen, but I enjoyed it. So I was going to go with two things. One, I liked the cafe they went to with the fun eclectic cups. Super cute. I like that. Super cute. I was into it. Two, I liked the end scene where the sister is drinking wine and just dancing with the daughter in the kitchen. And I was like, this is my forever Christmas mood. Dude, the other night, <laughs> that's funny. The other night, um, Sean was like upstairs dealing with the kids and I was downstairs. Uh, I was drinking a little bit, probably like a lot of it. And I was finishing up making dinner and I have Christmas music just blaring in the kitchen and he's upstairs and there's like screaming and crying and laughter and like, I don't know what's going on up there, but I'm not involved in it. So I'm in the kitchen. I just straight up start dancing like oh, yeah. Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant Love Actually style, just like busting moves and just like a freaking rom-com. I turn around and Sean's there like, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hello, what's up? I, I was having a great time. I was not ashamed. I was having fun. Oh my gosh, I do that too. And Puns just stares at me and he's like, are you okay? What are we doing? Are we playing? <laughs> and it's usually yeah, to- need to talk. And it's usually to, all I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So good. Those were good. Yeah. Thank Let's get that. to listicles. Brrr. Even though that's usually like a list and article, we're saying listicle because it's like listicle. list and icicle because we're festive. Oh, I see what you did there. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I used to host, host a little show called Top Five with Lisa Foils. So, you know, I know a thing or two about Top Five lists. So Caitlin texts me and she's like, yo, I had this great idea. Um, let's do Top Five lists of like our favorite movies we've watched this year and the our top five so bad it's good movies that we obviously not good movies but we still recommend them because they're just fun Mm -hmm. uh and uh we did it and kaylin i think you should go first and i think you should start with which one do i start with uh so bad it's good so bad it's good okay so so bad it's good this is kaylin's top five so bad it's good holiday movies that we watched in December 2020. Woo! All right. Uh, top five, so bad it's good. Number five, Christmas Catch for the $3 million diamond encrusted reindeer. And, Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And, and the twist. Yes. Four, Ding. Christmas Switch, switched again. Very excited, very excited for the trilogy to happen with this one. Nice. Three, Midnight at the Magnolia. Good. 
two, A Very Country Christmas. We talked a lot mm-hmm. about that is just the dynamics and it was fun. Oh, it was good. And number yeah. one, Operation Christmas Drop. Operation Christmas Drop. Just because nice. it's refreshing, something different. We can't travel right now. So it was really nice to be able to go to a tropical location. It was. All right, Lisa, hit me with yours. Now, here's what's funny. <laughs> Four out of the five are the same. <laughs> I cannot wait. I want to hear the order. Do they all match? But yeah, the order is different, except for number five. I also put Christmas Catch Woo! because of the Diamond and Crescent Reindeer. That's yes. exactly what I put. That's so funny. It's almost like we should do a, a podcast together. I mean, Christmas Catch would be higher if the Diamond and Crested Reindeer was life-size. I wish it was life-size. God, that's what I was picturing when you were telling me about it, and I'm so sad that it was like two inches Yes, big. Anyway... Uh, number four, I put Fully Snobby Dad. Oh, cool okay. When we watched nice. this one. I thought nice. it was, you know, I thought it was a good one to just turn on. Number mm-hmm. number three, I put Country Christmas. Because, again, mm-hmm. yeah, I like that one. I like the dude. He, That's the one with the country singer, right? The dude. Yeah, that's the... what I thought it was, too. Is it a very yes, country okay. Christmas? Or is it a country Christmas? The one with the I, singer that I, runs I, okay, away is I the ca- one we maybe, like. I don't know, Caitlin. God, they're all the same. The singer know. who runs away <laughs> to his town where it has the, uh, like, the camp. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll just we like put that Country one. Christmas. Yeah. And then number two, I put Princess Switch Switched again. Because you got to oh. gotta watch the the princess. You got to have Vanessa Hudgens' is, multiple of them in your Christmas season. And number one, I put Midnight at the Magnolia. Because oh. I would say out of all of these movies, I had the most fun watching that one because of how much... I was just laughing and pointing out silly things and, like, cracking jokes. I had such a good time watching Midnight at the Magnolia. Um, so, yeah. So, that's my top five. So bad it's good. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Should we move on to our top five favorite movies that we watched this Yes. Season? Top okay. five. Caitlin. Go. Number five. Holiday. Okay. Four. Noel. Three. Um, Jingle Jangle. Yeah. Two. Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. Nice. And number one, Happiest Season. I think that I did a a wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Now that I'm looking at my list, I think I did a thing I can't do. But let's just let's find out. That was a great list, and most of mine are the some of mine are the same. Okay. Number five, Holiday. The same with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, it was a good movie, but yeah, yeah. It we had a couple of shows with it, and it wasn't a, it wasn't top four material. I think we would have been more forgiving if there. they would have released it later in the Netflix season. The fact that we got it so early. I agree. I mm-hmm. think it came out a little too early. They were trying to jump the gun. I think it backfired. I, agreed, and I think they should have edited the trailer, because I think we both went in expecting that it was going to be like... A cute holiday rom-com when actually it was like a really raunchy comedy and they really should have sold that more in the trailer. Yeah. And by the way, that was not Caitlin passing gas on her side of the mic. That was pun snoring. Because yes. it just kind of sounded like you just ripped one. But we no. all know that's puns. It's yeah, puns. If you're on episode eight of this podcast, you know you know puns. It's just going to, he's going to snore the whole time. Our third contributor. Sorry. Continue. Number four. Yes. I love, yeah. Our third, our uh, third co-host um number four i put happiest season because i really enjoyed that and number three i put jingle jangle nice because we both had number three on the same season and then here's where i screwed up i put dash and lily as number two but that's not a movie as a tv that's okay we we (laughs) discussed it i thought dash and lily was a given but i do like it um yeah i loved i really liked dash and lily so i put that as number two but if that doesn't count i will substitute lego star wars special yes for number two and number one, I put Last Christmas, which is not a surprise, but unfortunately, Caitlin didn't follow the rules, and she didn't watch it. <laughs> I um, came unprepared to our final episode, and I don't get redemption till next year. You know what? It's fine, because we don't really have rules here on the podcast. We suggest movies and stuff that we should watch, and sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. Yeah. But all we do is have fun here. So yeah, so that's my top five list. Boom! All right, Lisa. Um, and the final now, one. Caitlin, yeah, Caitlin has one more one more thing. What movie would you delete, a.k.a. would hard not recommend? Would you like me to kick it off? Yes. You go first. A California Christmas. Yeah. 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 I'm with you on that one. I, so yeah. I, 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 it was between that and the other, a country Christmas 
or very country Christmas, whatever one we talked about that had the lawyer. But you put, okay, but you put that in the so bad it's good. No, I put, so remember we had the one with the country singer. So I think we had a country Christmas and a very country Christmas. What's the difference? (laughs) I need to know the difference. Hold on. on. Okay, Kaylin's going to clear this up. Because of course this would happen. Because all the plots are so similar. A very country Christmas is the one with the country singer. Okay. That well, he was super likable and he had the yes. bolo tie. Yes. And Deanna Carter sang at the end. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I like that one. I put yes. that on my so bad it's good list. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that was on my so bad it's good list. The yes. delete was a country Christmas, which was the one we watched that I think you, you discovered. Uh, hometown holiday. Hometown holiday. Okay. That's what I was what saying. Was that, what was that one about? That was with the lawyer trying to sign, sign the YouTuber. Where they go to the wedding in the barn that has ribs. Oh, oh, home. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one and was also, yeah, that one was really bad. Yes, and so uh, the the most redeeming thing in hometown holiday, and the reason that it did not get the bottom, was I enjoyed the relationship between the sister and her husband daryl and that's where we got the codes of countryness and all those things that i was like right if the movie had been about them i'd 100 percent it be on board for it uh and the only good redeeming thing we had about a california christmas was manny and the relationship with the um driver of the rich guy who drank wine and played video games which i personally relate to but that was about it yeah they were fun so I agree with you that the hometown holiday was like, I I don't even think I finished it. I don't think I could finish it. Um, yeah, that one was but, pretty bad. But my least favorite of all of them was, and I can't even remember the name, but I want to say it was called like Perfect Christmas Village. Or oh, like... a perfect uh, per- uh, Christmas perfection. Christmas perfection. The one that took place in like fake Ireland. Yes. Yes. That was the one that I'm like... Uh, it's got to go because solely because it had so the plot itself had so much potential that they didn't fulfill. There were so many jokes they could have made. There were so many different directions they could have gone with the concept that they didn't, that it was such a lost cause that that's why the one that's the one is for me is got to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can see it. And the, the weird figurines. I just remember the weird figurines. Yes. They were just the grotesque, horrible figurines. And she's like, this looks just like me. I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it looks like you if you were melted for a while. So, Lisa, if you had to act in that scene and they were like, so I need you to pretend this figurine looks like you. Could you do it? Oh, absolutely. I can do anything, Caitlin. Anything acting related, I can do. I know you could. Man, we really need to add up how many movies we watched and how many hours that we <laughs> dedicated our lives to these mediocre I mean, movies. and we're not done yet. There are other Christmas movies that we can watch on the Lifetime YouTube channel. Yep, I know. But you know what? Okay, so when we're recording this, it's only, it's Monday, and Christmas is on what, Friday? Yeah. Yeah, Christmas is on Thursday. I'll probably put this up tomorrow, so... Um, yeah, Christmas is in a few days. I think that we should spend our free time before Christmas Day watching really good movies. So I think that we need to watch Holiday. We need yep. to watch Love Actually. We need yep. to watch 12 Dates of Christmas with Amy Smart and Mark Paul Gossier, a.k.a. Um, the, um, Which I believe are, is on Disney+. Plus. It is on Disney Plus. Zach Morris. Say about Zach Mor- AKA Zach Morris. Holiday in, can- in handcuffs if we can find it. Um, what else? What are some other like? Oh, Elf, of course. Elf. Mm-hmm. Um, name it. Come on. What are some other Christmas movies that you try to watch every year? I, I try to watch The Grinch, both the animated and the live action. Mm-hmm. Hit me. What else? Um, so I actually just before. Uh, the other day, I bought The Holiday and Love Actually on uh, mm. Apple TV so I could make sure I had it and I could watch it. You have to have them. Um, Charlie Brown Christmas was free on Apple Charlie TV last weekend, which was great. Um, All the Rankin Bass movies, like Santa yep. Claus is Coming to Town, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Little Drummer Boy. It gets a little dark at times, but it's good. It's good, you know. 
good yeah, lesson. You recommend? Yeah, The yeah. Grinch is always a good one. Um, I'll probably watch the animated Grinch that came out last year because I actually haven't watched that yet, and it's on Netflix. Yeah, I yeah. haven't either. Is it? Because I tried to search for it the other day and I couldn't find it. Yeah, I believe maybe. it is. Oh, maybe I was searching on the kids' profile. Or something. Why wouldn't it be on the kids' profile? I don't know. Yeah, I, the think, I think they took one? it out. I think they yeah. took it off. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. What? Yes. So the new is Grinch Netflix one? a bunch of Grinches that you get rid of the Grinch right before Dude. Christmas. For like three years, they took off Love Actually from oh, Netflix, I know. I know. like November first, and I'm like, why so are you doing this? Evil, <sighs> evil, evil, evil. Um, just let us enjoy things. Come on. I know any other Christmas movies on HBO Max. Um, you and I both I fell know. for the marketing scheme because also we got Wonder Woman coming out on Christmas Day. Yes. There's so much good stuff on HBO Max. Chilling like, Adventures of Joker Supreme. yet, and I want to see Joker. Oh! And of course, they have Crazy Rich Asians on there. I've never seen that before, but I just watched it the other day, and it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas. So yeah, so you know, we're, I think we should spend the next couple days watching really good holiday movies. Have uh, you ever seen the, the original um, Miracle on 34th Street or, like, It's a Wonderful Life? I have. Um, okay, good. I'm just making sure because those are uh, Lisa, apparently there's a TV show on HBO Max called 12 Dates of Christmas, and it does yes. not have I know. who we think it should have. This is a sore spot. Sean and I have been debating this because he keeps going, hey, look, there's a new holiday movie for a holiday show for you on HBO Max called 12 Dates of Christmas. And I'm like, that is not 12 You're Dates like, of Christmas. Lies. There is a, a different movie with Amy Smart. And he's like, no, this one's called 12 Dates of Christmas. And I'm like, no, it's not. And we have fought about it at least three times because that's just, you know, the kind of relationship we have right now. That's yeah. the one thing we fight about. Uh, also Ridiculous on Christmas movies. Um, HBO Max is Meet Me in St. Louis. Mm. Which has Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I love that movie. I used to watch that over and over and over as a kid. The Judy Garland movie. Oh my god, it's amazing. And The Family Stone is on again. here. There's another movie called Holiday Inn. I don't think it's on... It was on Netflix for a little bit. But uh, I love Holiday Inn. What else? What the else, fact that else? The Family oh, White Stone Christmas. is on here. Jeez. Like White Christmas on Netflix. Have you seen White Christmas with Bing Crosby? Yes. 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 Okay, so that's also a really good one. Um, yeah, so, uh, so Caitlin, yes, what are Lisa. some holiday traditions that you and your family did growing up? Do you have any? Uh, we'd always open one gift on Christmas Eve. Okay, okay. Uh, David's family is the reverse, and they would, um, they would open their presents on Christmas Eve. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What? Why? Yeah. No, that's not yeah. right. Yeah. So my family wouldn't even do the one Christmas Eve gift. We were yeah. like, you, my parents were like, you little MFers, you wait. You will wait so until Christmas Day. The other one is, is that I don't know about your house, but my house, my parents would basically not let me eat junk food. So for Christmas, they would gift us like a can cans of like Coke and like fruit snacks <laughs> and like Twinkies. And that was like a candy. And that was like our time to go crazy besides like Halloween. Right. Oh my gosh. No, yeah. my parents let me eat junk food and uh, I watched a lot of TV growing up. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we <laughs> the two things you're not supposed to let kids do. Eh, I turned out okay. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are pretty much it. What about you, Lisa? Yeah, I mean, run-of-the-mill stuff. You know, leave out cookies for Santa mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve. We did not do the gift on Christmas Eve thing. I, that would be great to do, like, a poll. I, I'm going to do a poll on, like, my Instagram stories and see how many people do the one gift on Christmas Eve thing. Because we were not – we did not subscribe to that theory. And uh, let's see. What else did we do? So we, we tried to have this thing growing up where – Every Christmas mo morning, we uh, we wake up in our house, you know? It's like we have mm -hmm. other family members that we went and visited later in the day. But my parents really tried to make an effort that Christmas morning, you are in your bed at your house and you run out to your Christmas tree, which mm -hmm. I really appreciated Same. as a kid. Yeah. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep that tradition with my kids, um, you know, because we have family that lives – all over the country and uh, it would be great to like visit other people for for Christmas and I'm sure that we will one of these years but I don't know I think it's there's just something magical about being 
about knowing that Santa went to your house, you know? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, that's definitely. That's your that's your tree that you've been staring at every single day that has no presents under it. And then you go out there on Christmas morning and there are presents there because Santa brought them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of where the magic of Christmas comes from. Uh, so I'm trying to keep that tradition alive. And uh, if you guys out there listening want to tweet me, uh, you know, your traditions and how you feel about that, then I would love to hear that. I want to know other people's traditions. Yeah, definitely share your traditions. Uh, The other thing we used to do once we got older is we would make chipino on like Christmas Eve. What you would what? Make chipino. Do you know what that is? is? No. It's basically like an Italian seafood stew. So it's like basically made of like more of like a tomato sauce. And it's got like whatever you want to put in it. So you can put like fish. You can put scallops, clams, (sighs) crab. Caitlin, are you Italian? I am not Italian. (laughs) (laughs) We just have like this (laughs) Italian tradition passed on from from the old country. (laughs) No, no. Grandmama. (laughs) We are very much Irish with the deep appreciation for uh, Italian food and seafood. Yeah, I was going to say, you look just like me. You are, you, we are Irish. Oh, I'm Pretty deeply Irish. Irish. Although, when I go to England, I've been asked multiple times if I'm Italian, and I just don't understand. And you it's don't apparently, look Italian. I don't look Italian. Apparently, it's been my mannerisms and how I walk and act, because when I'm in the city, I just like have the attitude of, like, I'm not messing around, get out of my way, don't mess with me, which I put that face on anytime I'm in a city, and apparently, oh. they think that's Italian. Do you talk with your hands a lot? I haven't noticed you doing that. I mean, I am right now. <laughs> That's like, true. You are actually. I'm watching you and you are talking with me. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay, maybe you you got a little bit of Italian in you. Um, no, I am the opposite when I when I travel. I am timid and I'm scared and I don't understand anyone. Oh, and no. so I try not to talk to anybody. And I'm constantly lost because I have no sense of direction. I walk so with authority we differ and there. you download Google Maps and you get through it. Dude, I want to travel with you. I want to... Ah, when this whole stupid pandemic thing's over, we should all just travel the world. So yes. Fun. Oh yeah, we'll have to do something yeah. fun. But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a crazy year. So I, I am grateful that we're all home and we're safe and that we're doing something you know fun for the holidays that we're able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, this has just been honestly, this has been like one of the highlights of my whole holiday season. This is really fun doing this podcast and I want to do it even bigger next year and do a video element and a puns cam, just a, just a punch cam running the whole time. And maybe a little mic for him, like a little lipstick mic that just catches his snores the whole time. Oh, he would love it. I mean, just look at this enthusiasm on puns right now. (laughs) (laughs) The only thing that would make this better is if we were in the same room watching a lot of these movies. Oh my gosh. Last year we did that a little bit and it was so fun. oh my gosh we it was so got fun some uber eats and we sat and we just watched some dumb movies and uh it was yeah. like it was seriously the best so that's hopefully what we're try to do hopefully i'll year. find I'll, I'll i'll be in vegas again or we'll be around each other that we can do it but yeah i wish i so badly wanted to text you and be like did they send the treetopper to space as soon as they said 1969 <laughs> i was like because of the even stevens musical episode we yes, went to we the went moon. to the moon. Yep, in 1969, mm-hmm. I was like, "It's going to be on like the International Space Station." I'm ready for this. Let's go. <laughs> NASA has Man, it. I think if that would have been the plot, that would have been so amazing. Yeah, it's um, on top of like the little U- U.S. flag on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> See, we do need to write our Christmas movie, but oh, yeah. um, we are so thankful that all of you joined us for our silly little podcast that we did yes. for fun as a, just a fun outlet to wrap up this crazy year. Uh, Caitlin, you are one of my very best friends and I'm so glad that we could do this and you're lovely and delightful and, and amazing. And I think you're great and you smell good too. And your hair is soft, although I haven't felt it in a while, but I have a feeling that it's still very soft. Is it soft? Oh, thanks. I, it I, 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 I've been hair masking oh, in so uh, quarantine because you gotta yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta gotta treat yourself so yeah especially heading into winter break and lisa you are one of my best friends and i am just so happy that we did this and we were able to upload it onto your channel and thank you so much for editing these episodes you are edit these episodes hilarious well i mean you put it all together i don't know how to put it together (laughs) do you just slap two tracks together and upload it you made the graphics you did a lot of production behind it and i think it was fabulous I should just shut up and just accept it. Do your victory lap. How Uh, little I put into it. 
<laughs> that you have your your musical talents for Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> yeah. No, this has been great. Um, thank you guys for joining us. You can follow me yes, at Lisa Foils on every platform. You can follow Caitlin Ware. Plug yourself. Uh, you can Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KStewTurley. Uh, trying to get into TikTok. And you can follow me there at KStewPuns. And of course, you can always follow the fearless Frenchie puns at puns of damage Frenchie on Instagram we love you puns everybody have a, a good wonderful boy. Merry Christmas stay yes. safe happy Christmas. eat lots of food and happy cheers. holidays I hope, happy holidays I hope you guys get everything on your Christmas list and uh, and Santa comes to your house and there's just magic and and I hope I hope some of you find time to visit a gazebo in the snow at some point this with season. a cup of coffee and chat with the town busybody. Yes. And save an and thank inn. Thank you for listening. Oh, save an inn or a small business. Both apply. Yes. All right, Caitlin. For the last time, bye. Bye. That was good. <laughs>